Hi there! My name is Deborah Melkin. My blog is debthedba.wordpress.com and I'm a Microsoft MVP for the data platform. Today I want to talk about vector searches in SQL Server 2025. There's a lot to unpack with that one statement. Let's start with the first one, SQL Server 2025. Up to now it's been in private preview and by the time this blog is published, it will be in public preview, which is pretty exciting. It is coming down the road. And one of the cool new pieces of functionality is vector searches. We talk about being able to do searches with LLMs, large language models, and some of that AI capabilities. This is one of those pieces of functionality and how we're bringing it into SQL Server 2025. And when I say SQL Server 2025, I don't just mean something that's in the cloud. I mean, I'm going to be running my demos on my local laptop and a local VM on my local laptop. This is pretty cool stuff that we're able to do and really expand the reach of SQL Server. So let's talk vectors, shall we? When we first hear about that, I have two things that pop into my head. One of them is a line from one of my favorite movies of all time, where we have a pilot asking the navigator, what's your vector, Victor? If you know, you know. If not, please ignore the bad joke. But the other one, hopefully is a more relevant memory, is that one of when I was in high school, I was in trigonometry or pre-calculus or whatever you want to call it these days. And I remember when we started the module on vectors, my teacher introduced it as it has to do with physics. I wasn't taking physics at the time. I came home and I went to my dad, who's a math genius, and I was like, Dad, I, I can't do this. I can't figure this out. This, this is physics. I'm not taking physics. I don't understand this. I have no way to do that. And my dad, being as insightful as he always was, said, Deborah, forget the labels. Just think about the math. Think about the formulas, and you can understand it. And of course, he was right. So I think I did pretty well in that class. The last math class I took, not saying vectors were the cause, but you know, it is math still. So let's take my dad's advice as we think about vectors and what a vector is and what vector searches is, and let's kind of break it down and let's oversimplify it so we can understand these concepts. So let's start off by what is a vector? Part of the reason I threw that line in for my movie about the, the airplane is that's kind of what a vector is. He was asking what was our location? Where is the plane? Where are we going? And in a sense, that's kind of what a vector is or how I like to think of it. So take this icon right here, this green star icon. When we think about a vector, we want to have some way to, to designate what it is, a way to represent where it, I guess you could say, kind of lives in our model. And it's often done by a numeric representation, often called embeddings. You may hear it called encoding. And this is what we use when we talk about a vector. What is the vector embedding of our text, of our icon? And it's really a numerical representation. This is not how it looks for real. I am using random numbers right now just so we can understand the concepts. But it, on an oversimplified version, that's what our embedding is. That's what our vector is. So what does this mean for a vector search? How do vector searches work? Well, this is that trigonometry math formula that gave me such problems in high school. That comes into play here because that's how embedding work. That's how the vector searches work. We look to find the distance between the embedding we are giving, what our search criteria is, and the embeddings of the data that we're searching against. Take these icons. We have a smattering of icons throughout. We will give our search a prompt. I want to see all the icons that are stars. We then get our numerical representation, our embeddings. Again, these are all fake embeddings for now. And then we do a search between them saying which ones most closely match the distance of, I want to see all icons that are stars. And then our vector search will return that, and that's represented by our circle. It's a vast oversimplification, but it makes sense when you think about we're doing the distance. What's the shortest distance between the embedding of our prompt and the embedding of our data? 
So now let's see what it looks like in our SQL Server. One of the things that we need for our vector searches is a place to get those embeddings. And those embeddings are from a large language model or LLM. For my demo, we're going to use something from Azure AI or the Azure AI Foundry. I've gone into there already. I've set up a model using the text embedding ADA002 model. If you want to know more about how to set up your LLM model in Azure, follow the Microsoft documentation. All right, we are now in my SQL Server 2025 instance. My goal here is to show you the different pieces of vector searches. So we're going to get an embedding for a prompt. I'm going to show what the data may look like stored in our table. And then we're going to do a quick search to show how everything is brought together. I'm in First, I'm going to make sure I'm in my AdventureWorks database and that I'm turning on a few trace flags that enable all of functionality to work. Next, I'm going to do a call to that API, that Azure AI model that I showed you earlier. So at first, I'm going to put my prompt. We'll use the one we used from PowerPoint earlier. And I'm going to put it in a payload, using it as a JSON object. I'm setting the URL. And then I'm going to call this store procedure, SP invoke external rest endpoint. Think about that for a moment. What am I doing? I'm inside my SQL server and I'm making a call to an external API. New functionality that we have with SQL server, it has a lot of potentials, a lot of possibilities on how we can use that. But for now, we're going to use that endpoint, that external rest endpoint. I'm calling these endpoint that I have up here, this URL. I've saved my credential to my Azure AI already. That's already been set up. And now I'm going to get the embedding. And now we can see what type of numbers we're actually getting for the prompt that we saw earlier. And as we can see, I'm only showing a small portion of it, but this is what our embeddings look like. This is what our vector is. This is how we're going to search. This is where that distance comes into play. Now we have this. Now we can figure out what matches our embedding and when we do those searches. Now let's do something that's a little more useful. We're in AdventureWorks, so let's take some information. Let's use our product description. I'm gonna start off by combining it with some other information. So we can see a little bit of what we have for descriptions here. We have 1700 records. If I wanted to take a, an embedding search, give a prompt, and search against these descriptions, I'm going to have to do a call 1,700 times at least. That's a little more than what I want to do. And if you have a very, very large table, that could get expensive, and that could take a really long time depending on network and where your LLM lives. So let's simplify that. Let's store these embeddings in a table. I've set that up already. But one of the things I want to note is that this is a recommendation from Microsoft, storing it in a different table. What we have is we have a new data type called vector that is under the covers, storing those embeddings in a native var binary format. If you know your data types, you know var binary gets very large very quickly. If you have a very large table as it is, and you want to add those embeddings, that very large embedding to that table, you're going to start creating some performance issues, very, very large tables that you have to manage. By splitting the embeddings off into their own, it can help solve it and it can help make it a lot more manageable. I've already modified that, created that table, added the embeddings, gone through, and now we can see everything together. Notice my descriptions, we have multiple languages in here as well, and the embedding is able to handle that. So we can include that as part of our vector searches. So now let's actually do a search. Let's look for some cheap bikes. Well, I'm going to call it something nicer as part of my prompt. The code that I have here, I would likely want, want to put it into a store procedure because I'm going to call it multiple times. It's a lot of lines of code. It's not that many lines of code, but enough if I'm going to do it multiple times and repeatedly, I want it to be a store procedure. But for the purpose of walking through our examples, I'm spelling it out here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to declare my prompt and put that in a variable. I'm going to do the same thing that I did earlier. I'm going to make a call to my Azure AI LLM, 
and I'm going to call the credential, call the call the um, the API using that external REST endpoint store procedure, and I'm going to put the embeddings and the response into a variable. Then I'm going to do a search between that embedding and the embeddings that, that are stored in my table. This is just a sample of what it is. This by itself doesn't make sense, but for you can see that there's a new function called vector distance, and I'm going to be using a cosine as my part of the mathematical formula that I'm going to use to determine the distance. If you want the math, the Microsoft product team probably has lots of documentation on it. Read up on that and I'm sure they'll be able to help you with that. But for now we just need to know we're using cosine to determine the distance. But I'm going to take that query and I'm going to put it in a CTE and I'm going to select from my products. So now we can find the ones which distance is going to be the closest to the one that I prompt that I gave it. And if we look at the results, we can see things in the description like value priced bike, uh, without breaking your budget, high level of performance on a budget, entry level adult bike. It's already figured out what I mean by a budget friendly bike. It's able to figure out that prompt and the embeddings are finding the ones that are closest to that prompt. So it's understanding the intent of the prompt as well. Notice right now, all of the languages that I've been returned are English. So I mentioned that we have embeddings for non-English language. We can get that as a result. The same thing that we did before, the same queries, but this time I can say, don't return anything that's in English. And I can get my results. And we now see I've got some results in French here. And so they're all figuring out what that embedding is because the embedding is able to translate the language into that number. We've taken language out of it. And now we can just figure out the distance between those embeddings. There you have it. Vectors and vector searching inside SQL Server 2025. This is just a quick example to show us what it is and why we may want to use it. I think there'll be a lot of interesting solutions as we start using it more, but it's really great to see what the possibilities are and how we can get started. I want to leave with a little bit of resources. The most important ones are how can you get SQL Server 2025, install it, and start playing with it yourself. This is by no means an exhaustive list of information that's available to you on the Microsoft website. There's a ton of stuff out there and I have to say there are a lot of examples as well. And when you watch those, you'll see exactly how I created the code. And I wanna put a shout out to the Microsoft developers who put that together and made it available to us because I don't think I would have figured this out on my own. But I was able to get started, see what's there and see what the possibilities are. So I encourage you to do the same. I can't wait to see the solutions you come up with. With that, I want to say this was supposed to be an introduction, so hopefully it helps you understand vectors and vector searches a little bit more. Let me know if you found this useful. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.